Saturday, June 10th is going to be Axew Community Day in Pokemon Go. On Axew Community Day, not only will you be catching a whole bunch of Axew with a higher chance of being shiny, but all of them evolved all the way into Haxorus will know the exclusive move Breaking Swipe. In both PvP and in raids, Breaking Swipe is better than what Haxorus has going on right now, and in this video I'm going to talk about just what Breaking Swipe means for Haxorus in both raids and PvP. Overall, really big deal for Haxorus, and we may finally be seeing Haxorus in raids as raid attackers, and in both the Great League and the Ultra League due to this buff. As for the other bonuses in the event, it's just catch XP, so probably not the most exciting event around, but obviously... We got the hype right here, Haxorus, baby. As a dragon type attacker, you can see here on the DPS TDO spreadsheet on GamePress that Haxorus isn't making page one. However, page one does have a lot of competition and unreleased Pokemon, such as the Mega Rayquaza and the Mega Garchomp. So it's not easy being page one as a dragon type, but you will see that it is immediately at the top on page two here with the 18.19 DPS, which is comparable to the Rayquaza and the Salamence. So it's not that far behind the already existing dragons. As an added benefit, it has uh, just a mono dragon typing. So compared to other dragon types, it has a different resistance profile, which can be pretty useful for it in raids. And it also has the cross utility with Master League PvP, as Haxorus has traditionally been a powerful force in the Master League Premier Cup format. Obviously, with Breaking Swipe being a new addition to its move pool, being a great move in PvP, Haxorus is going to rise up even further. So I think overall, a uh, really good option for raids, but if you're not too into PvP, well, you can just stick with what you're already using, of course. When it comes to Haxorus in the Great League here, checking out on pvpoke.com, in the one shield situation, using Breaking Swipe and Surf, you can see that it's doing pretty good. We got 22 wins versus 21 losses. So, for most Pokemon, that's a, a pretty well resounding W in the book there. Now there is a little bit of Sim Hero action going on because Breaking Swipe is an attack debuffing move. 100% of the time it will debuff the opponent's attack stat by one stage. So that does help it out in some ways. Uh, but I think overall, you know, the combination of counter with Breaking Swipe being such an early move that debuffs, I mean, there's a lot of matchups I combed through where if they didn't shield the Breaking Swipe, they'd just get KO'd anyways. So... A little sim hero but not entirely sim hero uh when you're looking at the losses here too some things in the losses stand out to me uh with the metacham matchup the sableye matchup and the noctowl matchup starting out with metacham here you can see that yeah it's beating us yeah it's using ice punch but you know bad matchup for Haxor is resisting the counters because it's metacham but if metacham tries to farm us down you know, it can't fully farm us down before us reaching another Breaking Swipe. And the Breaking Swipes are doing uh, 42 damage. And here you can see we're down to 39 HP on the rank 1 Metacham. So, Metacham can't take it too lightly against the Haxorus. And we do have a fair amount of wiggle room to reach that attack. So, it's not a good matchup, but Haxorus has some chops here. And even if Metacham does take us out around this point... You know, it's uh, lower than half health, and it's been debuffed in the attack stat twice, which is um, roughly like the kind of same job that Dugong does, uh, but it's a lot less scary for Haxorus, aside from eating the Ice Punch, right? Can it even eat the Ice Punch right away? Yeah, no, it doesn't look like it. Don't counter swap Haxorus into Metajam. You will get Ice Punched. But yeah, no, so a good, not a bad situation for Haxorus. It's not a good matchup. But it's not as bad as it could be for other Pokemon that have a bad matchup with Metacham. Then when it comes to the Sableye matchup, I mean, kind of a similar situation, but that's kind of the name of the game for Sableye, being the Pokemon that just gets ahead of whatever it's trying to counter here. Um, but what stands out to me here is that there is an attack breakpoint. Now, 153.29 is kind of steep, but this is the rank 1 purified Sableye, so the Sableye that you meet in the field could easily have a lower defense stat than this. And either way, maybe you have an attack weighted Haxorus. I am working on the Haxorus PvP IV Deep Dive here. Hopefully I can squeak it out before the weekend, by the way, so make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips for that one. Um, from what I can tell right now, pushing to this high of an attack stat is a little bit on the risky side for the bulk, 
Um, but, you know, catching a Sableye that's slipping or maybe evolving a attack weighted Haxorus for this kind of situation uh, could be a good idea. Because if you do have the attack breakpoint, you're not winning the one shield situation, but we are picking up the two shield situation. And it does close on the charge move, and you do have plenty of wiggle room to counter swap onto the Sableye here. So if you are confident in the attack stat of your Haxorus, you could use Haxorus as a counter swap to the Sableye. Because Sableye does not want to take any of these breaking swipes. They do about, you know, 40% HP off of this thing. So pretty big deal. And it debuffs in case things, uh, you know, fall out of favor for you. And then finally here, when it comes to the Noctowl matchup, you can see that Noctowl is beating us, but it is closing with the Shadow Ball. A lot of people aren't going to try to close on Shadow Ball because, you know, Sky Attack, similar damage per energy, and it's a lower energy cost move, so why wouldn't you throw that? Well, right here is why you wouldn't want to throw that. If the Haxorus has some premium HP going on, it can possibly reach that breaking swipe. Another way to look at it too is if they swap to Haxorus, but you counter swap into the Noctowl, you know, if you don't throw that Shadow Ball, it might not be enough to take this thing out before it takes you out. Now, this is rank 1 Noctowl. A lot of people do run attack-weighted Noctowl these days. I, I can't imagine why. It might have something to do with the Noctowl PvP IV Deep Dive. Link up above in the description if you haven't checked that one out yet. So, probably not the best matchup in the world for Haxorus, but as a counter user, uh, definitely not a terrible matchup for the Haxorus. One final thing I want to mention for Haxorus here is, historically, it has been a god awful pokemon for the great league and the ultra league like you'd never bring this thing even as a spice pick because 1500 stat product is like terribly low usually 1700 stat product is like where a lot of glassy pokemon that sneak in are at you know and it doesn't have you know stab attacks for the most part because it's using the counter now we got breaking swipe to work with which is a stab attack and it is a debuffing move so if you think about the stat product like debuffing your opponent's attack stat as buffing your defense stat if you increase this thing's defense by one stage which we're not doing we're decreasing the opponent's attack stat by one stage but you know following that train of logic there uh, artificially your stat product is more like you know 18 to 1900 now you are taking previous damage because you're not debuffing them immediately um, but you can see how this does make Haxorus feel a little bit more tanky than it is and allows it to hang out in fights that it usually wouldn't be able to hang out in because you are getting that debuffing action there and uh, yeah for coverage I mean fighting type coverage with dragon type is phenomenal uh, steel type Pokemon don't want to deal with counter and everything else doesn't want to deal with breaking swipe so fairies are the only like you know safe safe option in this situation so yeah very glassy pokemon but a very potent pokemon in the great league now i expect to see a good amount of this it's hard to say if it's going to be big time meta or if it's going to be a little bit of a flash in the pan a little spicy spooky boy to scare people with um but right now it's looking pretty good so we'll see what happens in the weeks to come maybe we'll see that fresno is it even Fresno legal? No, it couldn't be, because Fresno is Saturday. So, we won't see it at Fresno. Maybe we'll see it at NAIC. Of course, just how good is Haxer is going to have it in the Great League now that one person's special boy is big time meta now. Then when it comes to the Ultra League PvP, we have kind of much of the same, where it's the middle of the pack kind of Pokemon having a, you know, 50-50 on the wins and losses. Compared to the Great League, we are picking up some more losses here, but... We do have some more fairy types that are considered meta by pvpoke.com, which uh, definitely wreck the heck out of the Haxorus. Um, but yeah, being an anti-Cobalion like, kind of option, an anti-steel option that does have the dragon type attacks is pretty interesting and will also make a similar splash in the Great League. I don't spend a lot of time doing Ultra League, so I don't have any fancy details to show at you there, um, but I think it's safe to say that that Haxorus is going to be a not bad Pokemon. And then it goes without saying that in the Master League, this is going to be a benefit for the Haxorus. Haxorus has already been good in the Master League Premier Cup, so with it getting Breaking Swipe, which is an objectively very powerful attack, I expect Haxorus to get even better. So that's about all I got to say about Haxorus right now. If you got any questions on this content, of course, comment below. Let me know what's up, and I'll be happy to help you out. And if you enjoyed this kind of content you want to see more like it, well, make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips.
I'd also like to give a special shout out to these Patreon supporters. If you want to support Swagman on Patreon, link in the description. Do you have any final words you want to share with the audience and maybe even any shout outs you want to give to people? Oh, wow. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. 